Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. Hear the commandments of God to his people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. You shall not make for yourself any idol. You shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not commit murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not be a false witness. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Jesus said the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Before we continue, last week somebody had a really good question. What did we just say? Um, Kyrie is the Greek word for Lord or ruler. Eleison is to have mercy. Uh, and then Christe you probably can recognize as Christ have mercy. So we're saying Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Just doing it in another language. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. And 
that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. The New Testament lesson today is from Hebrews. So also, Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, There will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it, and said that it was thunder. Others said, An angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. 
And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of our Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. The book of Hebrews is an oddity as far as the Bible is concerned. A good bit of that is because we have no idea who wrote it. Every other part of the New Testament has a name associated with it, but Hebrews doesn't even have a tradition of who it might have been. Many assume that the author was Paul or one of his followers. Others argue for one of the original apostles or even an early church leader named Apollos. After the first service, Phil told me that some even wonder if a woman wrote it and the men conspired to remove her name. (laughs) It's interesting stuff, but all of it is complete speculation. The author never mentions anything about themselves, so the writing remains completely anonymous. Another unusual thing about Hebrews is that beyond not knowing who the author is, We don't even know to whom it was originally written. Paul's letters always address a specific congregation, but Hebrews doesn't really give us many clues. In fact, you won't even find the word Hebrew in the book. Somewhere along the line, someone noticed that the book draws a significant portion of its content from ancient Jewish tradition, suggesting that it must have been written to Hebrew people. And then the name just stuck. If any part of the New Testament was originally a formal theological work, Hebrews might just be it. So despite its complete anonymity and other, utter lack of a defined audience, this unusual letter somehow spread its way through the church and became important enough that the early bishops retained it within our formal canon of scripture. It seems fitting then that this mysterious book spends a good bit of time talking about Melchizedek, an equally mysterious character. His name appears only twice in the entirety of the Hebrew Bible. A passing mention in the Psalms, which our Hebrews reading today quoted, and just three verses from Genesis. Abraham was returning home from a battle where he rescued his nephew Lot, along with quite a few local captives and their pillaged goods. Along his journey back, we read, King Melchizedek of Salem brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God Most High. He blessed Abram and said, Blessed be Abram by grace of peace, and priest of God Most High, not only within Israel, but he held those positions beyond and even outside of Jewish society. So that's the significance of Melchizedek, along with a substantial portion of the argument that uh, Hebrews is making in honor of Jesus as prophet, priest, and king. But now that we have the information, we need to figure out what we can do with it. We are rapidly approaching the end of Lent. 
Next Sunday, we'll experience the people of Jerusalem lauding and then rapidly turning their backs on Jesus as their king. But Jesus didn't come for titles. He didn't come for honor or renown. He wasn't a prophet because people recognized him as a prophet. He wasn't a priest simply because someone had anointed him as a priest. He wasn't a king just because the people greeted him as one. The people recognized Jesus as a prophet because, title or not, he functioned as a prophet. The people recognized Jesus as a priest because, title or not, he functioned as a priest. And the people called him a king, again, not because of some inherited title, but because he functioned as one. King of righteousness and prince of peace. The same goes for other titles like lamb and sacrifice and savior. Jesus didn't necessarily seek out those roles so much as by inhabiting their functions, the roles were simply part of who he was. Likewise for us who claim the title of Christian. Despite the way our society treats the concept, being a Christian isn't something one just calls themselves. Being a Christian isn't simply a title that someone inherits or assumes or takes by force. An individual doesn't become a Christian simply because of what they say or the culture they were born into or chose to adopt. A person becomes a Christian only by inhabiting that role, by functioning in life as righteous, being a force aligned with God, by following Jesus on a just and nonviolent path of peace, and by blessing others not only in word but in deeds. Again, we are approaching the end of Lent. Only two more weeks to go in the season of intentional reflection. So now is a good opportunity to take a little bit of time to sit down and think about your life. All of the habits and practices that not only fill your time, but both build and reveal who you are. Maybe even make a list if that were to help. Consider the shape of your life and then compare that with what you say you are and who you want to be. Are you faithful to God most high, maker of heaven and earth? Are you, in actions, not just words, faithful to Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Are you faithful to the Holy Spirit? Do you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? Do you persevere in resisting evil and... Whenever you fail, repent and return to the Lord. Do you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? Do you seek and serve Christ in all persons? Again, not simply with what you say, but by genuinely loving your neighbor as yourself. Do you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? Those are the marks of a Christian life. The way that those who truly wish to follow Jesus function in the world. So how do you line up? And how might you still need to change? Will you continue in your effort to follow our Savior, tracing his steps as a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek? Amen. Having heard the word of the Lord, let's stand and reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. <clears throat> we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth 
of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. <clears throat> Rest and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scripture. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily work and life. For this community, the nation, the nation and the world. For the just and proper use of your creation. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For Michael Curry, our presiding bishop. For Michael Hun, our bishop and for all bishops and other ministers. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. We pray for the sick and suffering, especially Chrissy, Whitney, Talvi, Hunter, Ethne, Bryson, Emily, Kurt, Jessica, Bryce, Paige, Sarah, Eleanor, Terry, David, Abe, Richard, Cynthia, Barbara, Arlene, Oliver, Nathaniel, Joseph, Lee and Patty, Jim and Barbara, Gordon and Martha, Paul, Matthew, Susan, H.D., Robert, Jacob, Lexi, Cami, Phil and Andre. Others? We pray for the Anglican Communion, especially the church in Wales. We pray for the Diocese of the Rio Grande, especially Our Lady in the Valley of Albuquerque, Hispanic Ministries, and Ministry to the Displaced. We pray for our parish, especially for those who work to make our worship together meaningful, for the members of the altar guild and choir, for lectors and Eucharistic ministers, and for the acolytes and ushers. We pray for those serving in our armed forces, especially Will Buntain of Fort Riley, Kurt Campos of Alaska, Jonathan Courtney in Germany, Daniel Fuller in Korea, Mary. Prayer number 50. How deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all men. 
for thee. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace, we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna. 
Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will.